Hi folks, today's lesson is on Newton's second law. And to start it, I have a question for you. Let's say we have a person in outer space like this person here. And there are two spheres here, one made of metal and one made of wood. And he's about to blow air on them both. Which one do you think will travel faster and farther? Let's take a look. One ball is wooden and the other is brass. The wooden one goes way faster and further out. Is that what you expected? Well, if you were familiar with Newton's second law, that would be what you would expect because Newton's second law tells us that the acceleration of an object is dependent on its mass and on the net force acting upon it. So in this particular situation, when we have a metal ball and a wooden ball and we blow air on them and we count this as the force that's being applied, F applied in one direction. Well, <clears throat> the ball with the heavier mass will have a lower acceleration and the ball with the lighter mass will have a greater acceleration. And so basically the more massive objects will accelerate more slowly and the objects that are lighter will accelerate more quickly. And that's kind of what we expect if we put a certain amount of force on a lighter object. And this is Newton's second law. We can, we have several equations that basically characterize and represent Newton's second law. The first one is force equals mass times acceleration. You should write this down in your pink sheet and we're going to use these equations. Force equals mass times acceleration. That's the first one. The units of this, of force, are going to be forces measured in Newtons. That is a new type of unit. We've never seen that before. And uh, I'll define Newtons in a second, but it's named after Sir Isaac Newton. And Newton is a unit of force. If we manipulate this equation, we'll get the next one, which is mass equals force divided by acceleration. And the units of mass that we have are kilograms or if we abbreviate it newtons is n and kilograms is just kg finally if we manipulate this one more time acceleration equals force oh don't need two equal sign there force divided by mass and acceleration, as we've seen before, is in meters per second square. <clears throat> now, what is a Newton exactly? Well, if I take mass times acceleration, the units of mass are kilogram times meters per second squared. And so, if I were to combine this, this is kg times meter over per second squared. So this is kilogram meter per second squared, and this is equal to Newton. One kilogram per one meter per second squared is equal to one Newton. And basically, that's sort of a mass and then a velocity per second, that's an acceleration of a mass. Acceleration of a mass is equal to a Newton, which is a force. It's the acceleration of a mass. Or another way to think of it is you have a mass times a velocity. So it's going a certain speed, meters per second, per second. While that may be, without going too much further, basically one Newton is equal to this, 
and it is a mass times acceleration. I just want to point out that constant force is not necessary for constant motion. We already saw earlier that if we put a force on something and there's no opposing force, let's say in a frictionless environment or in outer space, it will just keep on going. And so we can apply that force, take that force off, and then that object will keep on moving. We don't need to constantly apply force to have constant motion. Such is the case if we were on ice in a frictionless environment or in outer space. Let's take a look at some examples on how we apply these formulas. Here I have a five kilogram mass and there's some force applied that I don't know what the force is. But what I do know is that it's accelerating at two meters per second squared. Well, to calculate its force, I just plug in mass and acceleration. Mass is five kilograms, and my acceleration is two meters per second squared. If I were to put this into the calculator, that gives me 10 newtons. That's the amount of force that was applied to this object. Similarly, in this example, What's the force that's applied here? What do I need to plug in? Well, I know force equals mass times acceleration. I know that my mass is 200 kilograms. I know that my acceleration is three meters per second squared. And so if I multiply these two, this gives me 600. It's a force, so my final unit is newtons. Let's take a look at some examples where I have more than one force at play. Here I have a four kilogram mass and 30 newtons going in to the right direction and 30 newtons of force going to the left. Well, we want to know how much its acceleration will be. How fast will this object accelerate? Well, first I need to calculate the net force. That's the net force being applied to the object. And because I have 30 going to the right and 10 going to the left, my net force is 30 minus 10 equals 20 newtons. Those two forces oppose each other and cancel each other out. That's why I subtract them. To figure out my accelerations, force divided by mass. So I have 20 newtons divided by four kilograms. And when I do 20 divided by four, that gives me five. And my unit is meters per second squared. Let me just show you how that works out. When I have newtons divided by kilograms, remember newtons is the same thing as kilograms times meter over second squared. And when I divide that by kilograms, remember that's the same thing as multiplying by one over kilogram. Kilograms cancels out and my final unit is meters per second squared. And that makes sense because I'm looking for an acceleration. How would we calculate the acceleration of this object? Well, we know acceleration is force divided by mass, but we need to look, find the net force acting on this object. If I have 17 going down and seven going up, I do 17 minus seven, and that leaves me 10 total newtons of net force. And if I plug that in, I have 10 for newtons for force and 2 kilograms for mass and 10 divided by 2 that gives me 5 and when I do newtons divided by kilograms my unit is meters per second squared and that makes sense because that's an acceleration. This is kind of the case when I have 17 new newtons of say gravity force and then I have 7 newtons pushing up of air resistance well, I know that this is how fast my object will accelerate. And again, I needed to calculate the net force because that 
not only does Newton's second law say net force acting upon it, but these two forces are going to cancel out the 17 and 7. And when they cancel out, I'm only left with 10, and that is what is going to cause it to accelerate. Let's look at a word example. It says, what is the force on a 1,000 kilogram elevator that is freely falling at 9.8 meters per second squared? Well, I know I want force, so that's mass times acceleration. And I see that my mass is 1,000 kilograms, and my acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. So if I were to do that, that gives me 9,800. Now, if I have kilograms times meters per second squared, that's going to give me a unit of newtons, which is the total force acting on this object. So as it's accelerating, gravity is pulling it down. So it will start falling and it will continue to accelerate and fall faster and faster. Let's take a look at our final example. It says a 150 kilogram sled is being pushed by 267 newton force with a frictional force of 23 newtons, newtons opposing motion. What's the acceleration of the object? Well, let's draw this out. I have my sled and it's 150 kilograms. And I say that uh, an applied force, let's say, is 267 newtons. Well, frictional force is opposing this motion. And so it's going to be going in the opposite direction. And that's going to be to the tune of 23 newtons. And I want to calculate the acceleration of this object. Acceleration, if I look at my pink sheet, is force divided by mass. And if I have these two forces, I need to calculate my net force. My net force, let's just calculate that here, F net, is 267 minus 23. And so, if I do 267 minus 23, that's going to give me 244 newtons of net force on top, and my mass is 150 kilograms on the bottom. When I do 244 divided by 150, what does that give me? That gives me... 1.62667. But I want to round this to two decimal places. So I'm going to drop the 667. I'm going to round my 2 up to 3. And my units, newtons divided by kilograms, ends up being meters per second squared, which makes sense because I'm talking about an acceleration. So today, we learn how if I have a heavier object with more mass, it will accelerate slowly. But if I have a smaller object with less mass, it will accelerate more quickly if depending on the force, if they have the same force. We looked at the three equations that paint this picture for Newton's second law which is force equals mass times acceleration, force equals uh, mass equals force divided by acceleration, and acceleration equals force divided by mass. We looked at their units, which are newtons, kilograms, and meters per second squared, and these three equations characterize Newton's second law. Finally, we applied it to different situations where we were maybe given the mass and the acceleration and needed to calculate force, or we were given the forces and we needed to calculate acceleration. And you'll also see examples where you need to calculate mass. 
And in all these situations, what we needed to do was take a look at all the forces acting in an object to find first net force and then plug it in to find acceleration. In class, we'll be doing some practice together to continue to familiarize ourselves with this. See you soon.